Sam Bankman Freed just set a new record for losing the most money faster than anyone else. He lost nearly $15 billion in 24 hours. The 30-year-old crypto wonder kid with the curly-haired afro became a billionaire in just four years. A year ago, he had an estimated net worth of $26.5 billion. A week ago, $17.1 billion. Today, it's definitely not a billion dollars. This 94% loss is the biggest one-day collapse ever among billionaires. That's right. He lost most of his net worth in less than 24 hours. So how did Sam, or SBF as they call him, come to own and, as it looks now, lose an international crypto and stock exchange company called FTX and a trading firm called Alameda Research? His brother told Insider Magazine that as kids, he would play two board games simultaneously with a timer. He went on to study physics at MIT and described himself as a very negligent student. During college, Bankman Freed became interested in effective altruism. This is a philosophical movement that uses calculations to understand how people can use their time, money, and resources to help others. After college, Sam went on to work for a global trading firm called Jane Street. It was there that he learned the art of arbitrage, which is a form of trading where you can buy an asset for a lower price in one market and then sell it at a higher price in another market. Sam began to realize that he could use these skills to exploit price changes and gaps in the crypto world. By October 2017, Bankman Freed set up his own crypto trading firm called Alameda Research in Berkeley, California. There, he began to have spectacular success. In 2019, Bankman Freed and his team created and launched the crypto exchange FTX. In 2020, he opened the U.S. branch of FTX called FTX.US. With innovative and cutting-edge technology and features, FTX was a winner. Major investors like SoftBank Vision Fund, Tiger Global, Sequoia Capital, and BlackRock began funding FTX. By early 2022, FTX and its operations were valued by investors at a combined $40 billion, according to Forbes. FTX signed deals with major basketball teams like the Washington Wizards and Golden State Warriors. And for $135 million, they bought the naming rights to the Miami Heat's basketball arena. It also struck deals with athletes like Steph Curry and Tom Brady. But in early November of 2021, crypto publication Coindesk published a report that showed that Sam's Alameda research firm was financially vulnerable. In response to this news, FTX's top competitor and largest crypto exchange in the world, Binance, started making moves. A once symbiotic relationship between FTX and Binance, which later split to become respectful competitors, now turned savage. Chan Peng Zhao, also known as CZ, runs Binance. He is no friend of Sam and FTX. But his company did have a lot of money invested in FTX. He announced shortly after the report was published that Binance would be selling its holdings of FTT. FTT is the crypto coin or the native token of FTX. This set off what the rest of the world would know as a bank run. Traders and investors began rushing to withdraw all of their cash from FTX. And FTX did not have enough cash on hand. Bankman Freed had no choice but to ask Binance to bail FTX out. Binance began taking steps to acquire FTX, essentially bailing them out and becoming the new owner of FTX. But then, after doing some due diligence, they pulled out. Let it burn, CZ effectively said. This is shocking news. As one finance analyst said, if Sam Bankman Freed isn't safe, who is? The shockwaves of this event will be felt for months, even years. The question is, who else is going to topple now? Sam Bankman Freed lost billions, but not just him. All those investors pouring in millions upon millions of dollars, billions even, 
How many of them have lost and how much have they lost? They've lost billions over this past week while I've only lost my voice. I'm not here to dunk on Sam or to flaunt this in front of anyone. I hope that he has people around him who can support him and guide him carefully through this gut-wrenching experience. I have no idea what it's like, and I hope I never learn what it's like. I hope I never know. However, we should want to learn, or at least think about what happened and attempt to learn from it. One time, he was valued at nearly $26 billion, and then $17 billion, and then no one is really sure now. So the question is, how accurate and believable is that number? Binance and CZ, they looked at it and they said, nope, we are not confident in the value of this company. And then the next thing you know, everyone lost confidence in it, and now it's just a smoldering heap of technology. So was that valuation accurate? Was that net worth really his? Was that money they attributed to him really his? If it was, how could he lose it? If he could lose it, was it really his? If he could lose it, who else could lose it? If they could lose it, then was it really theirs? It's one thing when it's stolen from you, but it's another thing when it happens within the rules of the game. Maybe that's why Jesus warned us against trusting in the deceitfulness of riches. And later, first century Christian Paul said, be careful not to put your trust in the uncertainty of riches. All that wealth gone in a day. How does this challenge your ideas about value and worth? You are not the money you make. You are not the empire you build. You are more than that. Ancient records reveal a man named Job who said, naked I came into this world and naked I will leave. None of the decorations of this life are lasting, enduring, real. They can all be liquidated in a mere 24 hours. They can all be taken from us in the blink of an eye. It's worth noting that Sam was a humble guy. He apparently lived on a salary of only $100,000 a year. He lived with roommates and he drove a Toyota Corolla. He was a very generous man. He gave to nonprofits and other causes that he believed in. Some estimate that he gave away over $100 million. He was philanthropic and focused. He wasn't wasting his time and money on consumption. There's nothing wrong with working and creating and growing. Let me be clear. I'm not knocking that at all. But I think it would do us all well to use these sad events to remind us to focus on building and increasing enduring and timeless qualities like character, integrity, work ethic, worship, devotion, kindness, joy, mercy, humility. These qualities are enduring and these demonstrate your true value and no one can take that from you.